this is going to be a video tutorial on how to set up TeamSpeak 3 server connecting it to a MySQL database. There are those of you who might ask yourself, well, why do I need to connect it to a MySQL database? And the short answer is you don't. The only reason you might want to connect it to a MySQL database is that, well, I, I have a forum and I have a TeamSpeak server. And when re users register on my forums, it automatically registers on, on my TeamSpeak server. They get different access depending on what they've got, uh, for what forum access they've got. They get different room access on TeamSpeak. And this is all done automatically without me having to register any of the users. So it's a very powerful feature, but you can only take that, that feature is only available to you when you've connected to a MySQL database. So this video is going to be two parts. The first part is going to be going through what you're going to need in order to get yourself, get yourself set up. The second part of the video is going to go through the installation and the configuration. And hopefully I'll put a, a link in the top right hand corner that can take you straight to the install part if you don't want to go through the boring part. So you're going to need to get yourself a instance of your TeamSpeak server and TeamSpeak client. If you don't have that already, you can get that from um, the TeamSpeak website, teamspeak.com. You'll also want a MySQL database. I'm not going to show you the process of installing and configuring a MySQL database. It's very, very simple, especially if you're doing a Windows-based install. It takes about three or four minutes. Configuration is about a minute, um, and it's pr pretty much just click, 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 and done. So you'll definitely want to have one of those. It might be prudent to get yourself a non-profit license, which you are free, provided to you free from the guys at TeamSpeak. You do have to have your own website, you do have to have an email address that's connected to that website and you'll need the IP address of that website as well. They won't give out licenses without all of those things. But what it does allow you to do, the default amount of users is 32 users on one virtual server um, on, a non, on, a, on a standard install without a license. You can see here that with a non-profit license you can have up to 10 virtual servers and you can have up to 512 slots across all 10 servers. So that's a total of 512 slots across all 10 servers. It doesn't give you 512 per virtual server. But definitely worth downloading those. Uh, the, the process took about 10 hours. Um, I emailed, uh, well, I set up, I registered, they sent me an activation email, I clicked on the activation email, and about 10 hours later, I got my license. It may have been shorter than that. I used to use DYN um, to provide me domain name resolution so that I didn't have to give out an IP address, um, but I now use one on one to do that. Um, so um, I recommend it, but it's not imperative. And you'll also need access to your firewall. Now you see there's two entries here. The first entry is um, the TeamSpeak ports that are gonna be used, the communication ports, and you can see that I've got 17 ending in 27, and the protocol is UDP. Now here it says my IP address is 192, it's a 192 address, but I'm actually not gonna be using that one, that was when I had it hosted from my house. You'll also see a second entry for TeamSpeak here, which has got the starting port, port of um, 30033. Um, that is the file transfer port that's required that needs to be opened and forwarded to your um, IP address in order for you to allow file, tra file transfers. I've got here both, but the protocol is TCP over IP, and again, again, it'll have your endpoint IP address as well. So let's hop on to the host machine. I'm now um, using a remote server 2012 installation. You see here on my desktop that I've got a folder that has all my install fold and um, all my install files that I'm going to use and we'll come back to that in a second and you'll see here that I've got my MySQL workbench so it's easy to show you um, what's exactly going on with my MySQL server you'll see here that I've got an instance of the TeamSpeak server database already installed and I've called it TS3 so I've set up a schema and called it TS3 nice nice and simple and under users you can see here that I've got a TS3 user it doesn't have any database, um, it doesn't have any database management privileges, but all I've done is given it full rights to the TeamSpeak 3 schema um, or the TS schema, and you can see it's got full privileges for that. So we won't be um, visiting the workbench again or the MySQL server again. Okay, so let's get started with the install. I'm actually going to do the installation on a different drive, on my D drive. So if we just go over to here, we'll. Oops, Go onto the D drive and you see here that I've got my TS server folder, but it's got nothing in it. You'll need to extract the folders files from the uh, download from the TeamSpeak web server and add them to your folder. You'll also see here that I've got my license stat, which I um, requested, so I can go ahead and put that in there as well. 
Um, and then I've got three other files that I'm going to use and these are going to be included in the description underneath this video. Let's visit the first one which is called ts3db underscore mysql, a necessary file that you're going to need. If you just double click on that, you can see here that it's got a config and then it's got, um, it's pointing to my, um, it's pointing to itself as an IP address and we're going to give the username as the database username which we just saw which is ts3. Oops, that's TSE, uh, the password and the database name. Oops. And we're going to go ahead and save that and then we'll exit. And the second file is going to have a bit more detail that you need to add to it. Um, it's got my default port, which you can see was, was the port that I used um, in my firewall. I opened in my firewall, the IP address of my server and it's got the file transfer port which is the default one now you can change any of these and all of these to have exactly what you want so nothing can nothing has to be standard in, and that's including the um, query port as well you can have that as a different port if you wanted to so just fill in those details there i'm going to highlight them with brackets for you so you know exactly what you've got to fill in um, and it's important obviously you know your uh, this is your internal ip address not your external ip address although on this occasion my internal IP address is exactly the same as my external IP address, um, but it has to be your internal um, server IP address, not the um, external IP address. So we'll go ahead and close that, and we'll add these two files to my um, install folder. You'll also want to um, create a custom shortcut, so it'll make it nice and easy to start your server um, and even to set up at this point here. Now, you can do this via command line, but I just think that it's simpler to do it this way. So we're gonna go ahead and copy the TeamSpeak server underscore win64 or win32 um, executable. We're gonna right click and we're gonna paste a shortcut. We're gonna name it something different like TS server, keep it nice and easy. We're gonna right click on that, that um, newly created shortcut and go to properties. And at the end here, we're going to leave the addresses the same, but at the end here, we're just going to add this line here. And this will tell that what this does is it tells it, I'm going to just add a space here, it tells it to look at this file here for its configuration settings. Um, and this file looks at this file here, which says it's connected to a database and gives it all of its configuration settings. And we can place that shortcut anywhere we like to run. Uh, um, TeamSpeak. So that's that all set up. Now all I have to do is double click on this newly created shortcut. Don't double click on the TeamSpeak application because that will just create it without the default database. You need to click um, create it using the command line or you can use this method here which is just double click and wait a few seconds. And that's given me an admin which you need to write down. I always like to keep a backup of this admin information. So I'm going to go ahead and take that now. There's my admin. I've created a new folder and we'll just call that admin. And this is for your um, query server. Yep, server admin is right. So we'll go username and we'll go password. You can change this later on. And I've got my administrative token key. And I'll just say, oops, token. And we'll use that later. So again, we'll save and exit. And now we can close this. So with that in mind, if it's giving you that um, those details, those security details at the beginning, then it, it suggests that the installation has gone well, but you can always look in the log files here under the most under the latest log and we can see here that the it's listening on this IP address on this port um, and it's given us our server privileges and we've got our token here so we know that the server is up and running and we can should be able to see it it's running here in the corner TeamSpeak 3 server so what we'll do is we'll drag in our client here I've already configured it to connect to this um, IP address but we'll go ahead and click Eve kills main server and you can see that that's connected me straight to my TeamSpeak server. And what we'll do is we'll add the privilege key, which hopefully was the last thing I copied. It is, click OK. 
Privilege keys can only be used once, which is why I'm not hiding it. Okay, so now we've got a TeamSpeak server set up, but if we do go back to the workbench here, I know I said I wasn't gonna come back to it, and we look under the TeamSpeak tables, you can see here that all of the TeamSpeak tables um, have been created and is currently being used. And we're done. It's pretty simple, pretty easy process. It's a lot easier if you use the shortcut methods. Now you can add this shortcut to an automatic logon for Windows um, and it will automatically start using the configuration settings. I hope this has been useful. If you've got any questions, feel free to link me in the bottom of this video.